What's up, guys? What's going on, Dana? A little uh, international flavor tonight with the contract winners. I guess uh, was the main event probably the, the easiest call of the night. I mean, big undefeated heavyweight that gets uh, gets finished in the first round. Yeah, I mean, uh, Igor De Silva, in my opinion, was. Oh, Igor was the best one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when, when you look at, first of all, like I said out there, you know, 20 years old is way too young. Guy's been fighting for five years at 20 years old. His first fight was when he was 15. He's 8-0, 100% finish rate, four knockouts, four subs. Went in there and looked incredible. And, uh, yeah, you know, this, this kid is also a champion in jungle fights, so he's had five-round experience too. Where, where do you find a kid 20 years old that has all of that? Nowhere. Uh, so he was my first choice. For the night and obviously yeah a big heavyweight like that who's now 11 and 0 undefeated obviously has big power one punch knockout power and at his age he's a guy you can you can throw that's what i liked about a couple of you know i got a guy that's too young and i got a couple of guys that uh can be thrown right into big fights right now i was gonna, I was gonna ask you about that because you mentioned igor da silva and Kanan, 32 years old 20 years old is it you know for guys that are like guys that are out there that want to be here right is there an ideal path? Is it like, you know, at young, you know, 20 years old, you can kind of maybe get a shot? Or is it, hey, would you say get more seasoning, get more fights? Is there, is there Everybody's unique. Path? Everybody's got a different story and a different background. And, you know, this kid's been fighting for five years. He's 20 years old. Some of these kids that we find that are, you know, 24, 25 haven't been fighting for five years. So uh, I think that every guy has unique experience. And, and you know, Kanan is, is another one. Uh, He's got 16 fights with 13 finishes. So that's a lot of experience. And what, what does that tell you with 13 finishes? He doesn't fuck around. Yeah. That guy goes in to finish fights. So he's right up my alley. When guys come in young like that, I mean, we just had Raul Rosas Jr. competing, you know, a teenager. Do you tell the matchmakers anything like, hey, these young guys, let's tell them nothing. They, 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 these guys know what they're doing. This is probably, other than like, the UFC and, 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 you know, guys that are ranked and guys that have made it. The matchmaking on this show is incredible. Incredible. So I don't question anything. I don't know anything when I walk in. I have no rooting interest at all. I just walk in and whatever happens on Tuesday night happens and I make a decision based off what I see there. And then once I, you know, I'm watching them fight and then as I start to dive into who they are and where they come from and what they've done, it's fun. So walk us through the logic on the draw, right? Unique situation. You got a yeah. draw, so you don't have a winner. And we're sitting here thinking, do you go zero contracts? Do you go two contracts? You all know what a 10-8 round is now, right? Yes. That was a 10-8 round, right? Would everybody agree that was a 10-8 round? 100%. Complete domination. Looks like it could be stopped. Uh, you know, the, the significant strikes were 50-something to nine. That's a 10-8 round. Let's just... Let's start there. Um, yes, the first ever draw. The minute that girl Stephanie stepped into the octagon, it's this weird fucking thing that happens to me. I was like, huh, interesting. Let's see how she fights. She's super young. She's 23 years old. She's 5-1. and one. This other girl's 32. She's 4-0. Oh. This is like both ends of the spectrum for me. And then as the fight started to play out, um, yeah, I like Stephanie. It's going to be, I, I'm interested to see her first fight in the UFC. She goes home and works on some things. What I really loved is when you look at Talita, she's a, a six-time Brazilian jiu-jitsu world champion black belt. And she had a lot of ground control. Her big thing is the rear naked choke. She had her back a few times. She couldn't finish her. So it's interesting. It's going to be interesting to see what Stephanie can do. Um, I want to ask you, we say international flavor night. You know, we had uh, Dana White's Contender Series Brazil before. Is there any talk ever of doing, like, national-themed shows like that again? Or, or do you feel like just the one season each year is enough? What's the question? You know how you did, like, uh, Contender Series Brazil before? Like, tonight yeah. we had a lot of Brazilians. A lot. Of that was tonight. Tonight was Contender, yeah. Contender Series Brazil. I was wondering, do you, I mean, do you ever talk about doing, like, international-themed seasons like that again? We have talked about it. Yeah, we actually recently, within the last week, uh, we talked about it. Um I don't know. You know, I was worried about coming out of COVID that, you know, we'd have a hard time with talent. It's actually been the opposite. I mean, there's, there's talent popping up everywhere. So, I don't know. Could be. Uh, a couple outside of tonight, you mentioned the 10-8 rounds. I think we all know what you're referencing there. Well, we didn't see you on Saturday. So, I guess, what were your thoughts on the title fight and, and how it played out? So, 
I was on vacation when this thing happened, and I'm sitting in my house going, ten, when I found out that one of the judges scored 10-8, I'm like, this guy should be fucking investigated for this. This is the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. And as I started to talk to people, you know, I guess there was a, you know, there's a seminar tomorrow with the Athletic Commission on 10-8s. So hopefully they can get this cleared up, especially in title. There's so much at stake in a title fight, more than just money, um, you know, show and win and pay-per-view and championships and, and, and legacies. And it's just, you have to have the best of the best in title fights. So um, they've assured me that this guy isn't a bad guy. He just fucked up and made a mistake. And it, it's, it's unfortunate. And there's no way in hell that was a 10-8 round. Now you kind of wonder what you, you do next, right? I mean, it sounds like Valentina's going to need surgery on her hand, so I don't know if that impacts it. But do you feel like they need to fight a, a third time? You have to rematch. You have to do the rematch. We will rematch them. It's, it's the right thing to do. It's the, it's the fight that needs to happen. And, uh, yeah, so let, let me tell you guys this. Let me tell you this text I got today. Ah, fuck did it go. All right. Hey, Dana. Your idea to go all in on Mexican Independence Day paid off. Noche UFC was the most watched fight night of all time on ESPN+. 1.1 million unique views. 1.1 million people that had never been to ESPN+, tuned in for that fight. So think about that. It generated 167 million total minutes. Yeah. And it, it, was, it did 3x the average viewership minutes watched on the Spanish feed. Wow. Killed it. Wow. It was an incredible success. You, I mean, uh, do you think you'll make that an annual event? I think we weren't really sure going into it. I mean, it, it was super. It, it, I will get that date every year from now on. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, and you did say that. So you'll, you'll match them next. Shevchenko Grasso will have to compete fight next, you think? Yes. Great. Last thing for me, I just want to get a follow-up. Have you had a chance to speak to Israel Adesanya yet? We're still kind of waiting. To I have you. not. I know he's in L.A. right now working on some stuff, but no, I haven't talked to him. Does it, are you waiting to hear from him before you decide what to do at middleweight? No, no, no. Listen, he's – one of the things – we were talking about this this week, too, that we always love about Israel. Israel was willing to fight anybody, anywhere, anytime, loved to turn around quickly and, and fight again. And when he wants to fight, he'll let us know. Dana, going back to that 10-8, <clears throat> obviously we can't really make an assumption, but what do you think the judge was thinking during that? Do you think it was like, oh, I feel like Alexa won the, the fight, but I've scored it too far to Valentina, so I kind of have to make it up. Did he not see the choke properly? Like, what do you think could have caused him to make that a 10-8? Unfortunately, you'll probably never have the opportunity to have him sitting somewhere like this and ask him that question, because only he knows the answer to that question. Valentina gets dropped in like the second or third round, I don't remember. That's not a 10-8, but the fifth round is a 10-8. Especially when Valentina was winning the first three minutes of the fifth round. It literally makes no... Is that something you would like to see? I know you can't make it happen, but would you like the judges to be able to speak to the media after a controversial decision or even the commission themselves just come out and speak? Do you think that's something that could benefit them or is it going to make them a target of like crazy hate and bullshit? Yeah, unfortunately, that is part of the... And, and, and I get it why the Athletic Commission wouldn't want to put their guys out in front of, you know, the media and, and, and deal with the fans and all the bullshit. Um, but... Uh, you just don't throw 10 eights around. 10 eights are third round tonight was a 10 eight when there is an absolute ass whooping and the fight could be stopped at any moment. And, and one fighter absolutely dominates from bell to bell. You can score to 10 eight. This whole, what was it? Domination, control, and all this other bullshit. It's just the biggest crock of shit of all time for a 10-8. A 10-8 is an absolute ass whooping. Period. If, if the judges aren't going to speak to the media or the fans, do you think they should at least be able to speak to the fighters themselves? So can Val Valentina should be able to go to that judge and be like, explain to me how you gave that 10-8 to Alexa. Do you think you'd like to see that? No. No. No, you're not going to see that. Um, and, and, and you have to understand too, and I'm not defending anything. These people are human. They make mistakes, but 
that's this one's total bullshit. For for that to be a 10-8 round, there is no excuse for that. There is no excuse for that 10-8. UFC Noche, you want to have that on the same date every year. This yeah. year, you pushed Canelo off that date. I yeah. know sometimes you guys have clashed in the past, but it seemed like you got that, and they didn't want to go against you. You think these numbers that you pulled this I, week? I will go that date every day. I don't care if somebody here in town gets the date at the arena. I'll go in an opposing arena and go head-to-head -head with them next year. I'm doing this for the rest of my reign here. <laughs> so they can go on the same night. We can go head-to-head. -head. I'm going thing was a massive success for us. This was something that I've been thinking about since the day we bought this company. So we're finally in the position. I'm all in. All my chips are in on Mexico. We're, we're opening the PI, which we spent, you know, millions and millions of dollars on. Uh, I was in here talking to you guys. It might even have been you or somebody else. We were talking about, why, why aren't you doing it? I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. Why am I not doing that? We did it. It was huge. And uh, we'll do it again every year regardless of whether boxing goes or doesn't go. I will go head-to-head -head with them every year. Awesome. Hi, Dana. Yep. Um, I just have a quick question about Power Slap. Today there was a new rule announced, rule change announced. What, right. what went into that, and what was the decision behind doing that? Yeah, so the uh, you know this thing is still evolving and growing, and uh, you know the commission was very uh, – they've been great with us and, 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 and figuring this whole thing out and – making it as good as possible. We just had drug tests again, like there was one failure instead of, you know, it's, it's, it's no different than the UFC in the early days. I mean, we didn't start spending millions of dollars a year with USADA because we thought it was, uh, you know, just something we wanted to do. It's something that we had to do to clean up the sport. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue to tweak rules and production and work with the commissions all over the country. You know, as we lead into next year, Early next year, we'll be in five, six new states. So then we'll start traveling around and, and, you know, selling tickets and doing things like that. So everything's good, man. Our video game, I don't know if I told you guys this already, but the video game did 350 million downloads and um, kicking, I mean, just kicking ass. So it's all good. And the commission's been awesome. They've been great to work with. I was wondering if you could also just talk to me a little bit about Raul Rosas Jr. and his performance. What did you think of that? Um, Whose performance? He, Raul Rosas. Who? Yo, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what what could you? It was incredible. Uh, you know, he came out and you know absolutely dominated. A real guy, tough guy, um, and looked good doing it. He got the pop. So I don't know what it was like for you guys, but on on my social. I'll give you an example, like, like the face-off between Valentina and uh, Alexa did 1.5 million views in less than 24 hours. He did three, three million views in less than 24 hours. He, he doubled what, what the main event did and destroyed the rest of the card as far as views. Um, yeah, they love that kid. Do you think we could possibly see him maybe headlining a fight night coming up soon? Maybe have a youngest... Well, Later. after what happened on Saturday night, we're going to Mexico. So, yeah. He'll, I don't think he won't be headlining Mexico, but he'll be there. So, we're, uh, we're already in the works on, on the Mexico fight. Thank you. You're welcome. Going back to the Noche UFC, the outdoor weigh-ins in that Q&A, what did you think about that? Did you like that? And is that something that's yeah. going to be part of it going forward? Well, we've done it before. We, we've done that before um, many times in, in different cities. But, yeah, that's always a winner when the weather's right. And then last thing, just to clarify, you talked about how Grasso, for sure, we want to have that rematch. If the injury of Shevchenko and the surgery of the recovery is long, are you still going to hold out and make that rematch? No, we're comfortable with, with where she's at as far as her injury is. We're, we're comfortable with it. That she, she probably starts striking again in uh, three months or a little less. Yeah. Yep, all good. Dana, uh, as... As you mentioned, you, you want to go back to Mexico, and it was announced on the broadcast that the, the, the plan is for 2024. It could be like first quarter, or could it like yes. be at the same time as the PI opening? No. No? It's going to be separate events? And yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, believe me, I would love to have it coincide with, with, with the opening of the PI, but the, the timing's not going to work on that. And, and what are the, the odds for Alexa to be not right now just to have a champ? You, now we, we realize that it could be a, like a finite or another noche UFC in Mexico City. Is, is, what are the odds for her to be like defending the belt in, in Mexico this time? 
Very good. <laughs> Very good. So it will depend on when Valentina is, is going to be... Uh, is what? It will, it will depend on the timing on Valentina's injury to go back. No, I think that Valentina can start striking in, in under three months or three months. So we're good. We, speak, we spoke for the first time about uh, having this Mexican uh, not in the pens because it was about Cinco de Mayo in, in March. So can you take us about the, with the process of what happened with your team when, when the first time you told them, I want to do this, I want to take this... Uh, Mexican in the dates from boxing. We, we, I think we can compete now. We have enough talent. Can, can you tell us about the process of what happened during this year? To get well, I, don't, I don't want to take the dates from boxing. They can do whatever they want to do. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, I'm going to take this date now. You can't have it. You guys can go at the same time. You can do whatever you want to do. You know what I mean? So, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, as soon as I said, yeah, why are we not doing this? We should do this. We went right back to the office the next day and started working on building the card and you know um we built what was saturday there, there was a few like unique things for for noche like the graphics and uh the music during the, the cuts and everything and even the jersey have you seen the jerseys are around six hundred dollars now i mean they, they sold out like early in the in the card and they're like people's paying six hundred seven hundred dollars yeah the green, i I, the green I, did, jerseys. i heard about that but i didn't see him i didn't see that yeah they're on ebay around seven hundred dollars are they really oh shit all right um yeah yeah so this was our first time out and uh you, you know how we operate it'll get better every year we'll make it bigger and better every year that we do it um we're, we're all in on this thing thanks a lot dana All right. Well, just to follow up on Notch, obviously it was free this year. Do you see that staying the same every year or do you think eventually it'll be so big you What? Could, uh, USA Noche? Do you think it'll be stay, stay free or can you see it becoming a pay-per-view? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, uh, just like everything that we do, it will evolve and get better and grow and get bigger. And with the opening of the PI and, and it's just, I, every time I say this to you guys, am I, am I wrong? Watch what we do in the next three years down in Mexico. Watch what we do in the next three years. Dana, um, can you explain uh, explain a little bit more on why you passed on Daniel Allen? Um, was it just be, like was it his record? Was his no his age? No, no. He, he, Listen, he didn't get a finish. Yeah, nope, none of that. I, I look at people and uh, for example, you know um, Stephanie, right? Young, this, that. But I, I, I in that fight tonight, she was aggressive. She tried to finish the whole time, stuffing shots, and I think she was on the ground for six minutes and 27 seconds with a six-time Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion whose thing is the rear naked choke. She stayed out of it the whole time. She was dominant on the feet, aggressive, and I just saw something in her that I liked, and I think she can, she can be somebody. Now, Daniel Allen... So he goes in, you know, if, if you, he didn't wrestle tonight. He had to stand up. He was in there with a damn good wrestler. Um, there were a lot of fouls in the fight. Um, he is 4-0 and he's 31 years old and he needs more time. Um, what I did like about him were all the things that I said. He's undefeated. He's 5-0. He's a 2-1 to -one dog. He proved the odds makers wrong tonight and everybody who bet against him tonight, he proved them wrong. And uh, he just needs some more time. I think with some time, I think we'll see him again. Did Daniel Cormier almost convince you to uh, sign him? No, no. <laughs> Cormier and I were on a plane on the way home from uh, New York. And, uh, you know, he was telling me the story about how he watched UFC 100. And he was like, this is awesome. He'd seen it before, but for some reason, UFC 100 hit him different. And he wanted to go to 101. So he went to 101. He loved the show. And he said, I'm going to do this. And he fought like four days later or something like that. And that was it. I mean, he was, I think he was 31 or 32. And became one of the greatest of all time. So listening to that story made me think. I'm looking at these guys that are in their early 30s. And I don't think that they, they have enough time to become world champions or whatever. I'm wrong. So, like, even listening to that story, like, 
did it kind of almost push you to sign him? No, <laughs> not even close. I, uh, I think this kid needs more time. I think that I would be doing him a huge disservice bringing him in at the level he's at now into the UFC. He could fight in these smaller shows and get more experience with guys that are his level. And I believe we will see this guy someday, again someday. This isn't one of those things where, like, I'm not interested in this guy, whatever. If this kid can keep it right after not getting picked tonight, get some more experience, I believe we'll see him again. Um, with you saying that, you know, Grasso versus Shevchenko is probably next, is it safe to say – uh, Aaron Blanchfield versus, versus Manon Faro is prob probably going to be next for, for the number one contender. It would make sense, right? Um, and then finally, there's been some rumblings, China in December. Um, is it? Uh, are you trying to do Wei Li Zhang versus Yao Xiaonan for the strawweight title? Uh, yeah, that's not true. That, that wouldn't be China, no. Thank you. Yep. You, you, know, you know we're... We're getting thin on fucking questions at the Contender Series when you guys are asking me about China fights. <laughs> this better be good. What do you got? I, I'm putting the focus back on Contender. Um, Igor Silva obviously won a contract today, and he's only 20 years old. Last year, you signed Raul Rosas Jr., who's going to turn 19 next month. As someone who's been around this game for a long time, what do you make of all these young athletes making it to the big stage at such a young age? And what do you make of this, like, in terms of the evolution of the sport where we're seeing all these young guys make it to the UFC at that age? I think that every once in a while you will find these, these kids that are special that, you know, at a younger age they can come in here and they can adapt to it. I mean, look at Vitor Belfort. Vitor Belfort was like 18 years old with his first fight in the UFC, and the guy became a legend and stuck around forever and fought all the best in the world. Um, some have it and some don't. I think that Igor has it. We're going to find out whether I'm right or, right or wrong. So, And uh, you said you felt something special when you saw Stephanie make the walk tonight. You mentioned, like, the it factor. What are some other fighters you've seen that where you felt that same feeling? Sugar Sean O'Malley. Uh, Conor McGregor, the first time I ever met him. Ronda Rousey, the first time I ever met her. Um, the list goes on. Chuck Liddell. When, when I met Chuck Liddell, the UFC didn't want Chuck Liddell. They had released him, and they didn't want him in the UFC. I mean, when I managed him, I was fighting with those guys for like over a year to try to get them to sign Chuck Liddell. They didn't want him. Oh, wow. And uh, I wanted to put the folks back on Noche UFC for a second. There was a prelim fight between Lacerda and Chires where referee Chris Tagnoni stopped the fight when he thought Lacerda went out. I'm not sure if you saw that. After review, they made the decision, and indeed he was not out, and they called it a no decision. What would you make of all of that? Yeah, listen, it's unfortunate. It sucks when that stuff happens, but when you think about what – Instant replay was meant to do why it was, you know, uh, why it was put in place. It did what it was supposed to do. And uh, I know you just kind of bashed on that China stuff, but uh, there's also rumblings about Ireland in December. Is that is that true? <laughs> you had to fuck this whole thing up, didn't you? <laughs> you you were on point. Now we're in fucking Ireland. I have no idea if we're going to Ireland yet. You blew it, kid. You blew it. Does anybody else have any other stupid questions for me tonight? Thank you. Have a good night.